the Human Security Officer, Part 28. That is something we can discuss, but for now Dash. I left Cerberus to you, who's Captain now? Cap? Pen, please. I requested the Yosa take you so I could catch up with an old friend. Cerberus is complete Dash. Fuck that. What's happened to Cerberus Samir? The man paused a moment as if readying himself. Fireteam Cerberus has been disbanded. Or rather, it has no active members. They'd never decommission a name like Cerberus, but until they decide to fill the spots it'll sit as is. Deeg had little trouble interpreting Penn's facial expressions this time. Her jaw clenched and her eyes went wide. She stood straight, arms falling to her side. She walked forward. If her body language wasn't enough to clarify her turn and mood her words were. What? The fuck do you mean? Pen. I left Cerberus to you. I recommended you for captain. What happened? They offered me a promotion to captain of the Osa and I took it. Pen was practically leaning over the desk now. So you just threw Cerberus under the bus for a promotion? Samir stood now as well, he matched Penelope's energy. I have never been unclear about my goals. I was on the track for captain of a ship, and you pulled me off it. You did that. Because you were good. Good enough for Cerberus. I told you when I took your offer that I was doing it because it would help me. I never wanted to be captain of Cerberus and you knew that. Don't you dare put that on me. I didn't decommission the team. I didn't sacrifice your fire team for a promotion. They offered me the promotion, I accepted, and they decided to let Cerberus sit empty. Penelope didn't know how to respond. A few moments passed and her anger deflated. Her posture followed as she backed down. The rest of the team? Shuffled around like normal. Filling holes in other special operations teams. All fine though. Samir sat back down. I'm glad to see you're doing well too. I need Samir. Pen made to leave. We still need to talk about Dash. You can talk about the weapons with Deke. Her words were punctuated by the swiftly shutting door. The room sat for a few moments in awkward silence. My apologies sir I can go get Dash Tunny T started. No apologies needed. Pen and I, well, I hadn't been eager to break that news to her for some time now. It was never something that was going to go over easily. She just needs some time. For now we can discuss what has found its way into your cargo hold. Penn stalked down the hallway to the elevator but found Martin starting to step in her way. Cap? Ma'am? Is there somewhere I can help you to? No. I'm just going for a walk. Air, I'm sorry but non-military can't be allowed to. Penelope cast a dark glare at him. To, um, move about, the ship. He was quickly withering under the pressure. Penelope decided to just start walking again, whether or not he moved was his problem. That said, given that you are a friend of the captain's, you should be fine to go where you please. He'd barely finished the sentence before the elevator door shut in his face. Penelope looked at the familiar console and hit a random button. She truly didn't have anywhere in mind only wandering until she found a quiet hallway with a spot to sit. She must have found her way to an outer section of the ship as there was a viewport that looked past the naval yard and down onto the planet. It didn't have life but even the grey-brown rock from this distance was a beautiful sight. It was coupled, too, with the patterned movements of various military ships. Watching them was as calming as it had ever been. The hallway drifted away as she remembered the first time she'd sat and watched a scene like this one so very many years ago above Aster. I wonder if it's the rank. A voice pulled her back to reality. Connolly stood a few meters down the hallway. Now, however, he was dressed in simple gray fatigues. Hmm. Well, I've caught Samir here on a few occasions. Other than him it's always pretty empty save myself, until now. 
I wonder if it's a captain thing. It's quiet, in the view. Pretty damn good, huh? He walked over to the window and stared out at the scene. Always did like them. Wish I had my things on me. Watching the ships move from point to point helped me think. I'll make the terribly easy leap in logic and guess Samir broke the news? Yeah. She's not dead, could always come back at some point. That's how these things always go. It's what they always say, not dead just sleeping. Cerberus deserves the best. That's what I left it with. I just can't believe he'd let it happen. He could have. I mean, could you? Could you just let Excalibur get thrown away? Could you, he said without thinking. He turned to look at her and found a stern face locking eyes with him. I think I'd prefer to be alone, thank you. I, erm, of course ma'am. Connolly stood straight and performed a crisp salute before continuing down the hall. He was gone and Penelope was left once again with the silence and the view. Deed took a seat in one of the chairs. As it was made for humans it was far too big for him and his feet dangled off the edge. Samir held out a hand over his desk. First off, Captain Deed, I must extend the thanks of the UEMC for safely returning her property. In the wrong hands they could have caused a great amount of pain. Gareth couldn't help but scoff at the idea that they might not cause pain in the right hands. Captain Samir continued. Given the contents of the crates it's only fitting that you receive a reward for your selfless actions. The UEMC may not be a member of the Galactic Federation but we keep a small account of Federation credit for certain occasions such as this. I have the authority to pay a stipend of this as I see fit. I think the amount of 10,000 is warranted. Deeg almost fell out of the chair. Um, yes that, that is acceptable. Certainly. Excellent and of course the journey shouldn't be at your expense either so we've taken the liberty of refueling your ship. It is appreciated. We would appreciate it if at some point during your stay you would record any pertinent information you might have that is connected to this breach. I'll talk to the Captain Pen about what she saw of course. Everything will be relayed to NIA, and anything might be useful. Mia? Tunny T asked. Naval Intelligence Agency. NIA. They're the ones who will find out how those crates found their way so far from UEMC hands, and who did it. Gear such as that doesn't just fall out the back of a supply convoy and float into alien space. Speaking of the gear itself, it may have been used, somewhat. Deeg offered tentatively. Used when you found it? Not exactly. Penn might have made some use of it. But there really wasn't much choice. Another human and some frames were legitimately attacking a colony. People were dying. I see. Pen wouldn't be in trouble for that, wouldn't she? Or us? Strictly speaking, use of military gear by non-military is one hell of an offense, but given the situation I think it may go with little notice. It would seem, though, that I have more to talk to Pen about than I thought. A human, you say? Yes. And they are, dead? Yes, Dash. Pen didn't. Pen didn't, there was someone else. Gareth interrupted. The Osa's captain didn't speak but a dark concern came over his face very suddenly. Raxia Colony had finished the work of dismantling the frames and things were returning to some semblance of normalcy. Given the event that occurred, there had been a heavy increase in traffic to and from the planet. Defense forces and news groups only brought more attention and thus people to the planet. All of them took quick notice of the large figure that made its way off of a transport vessel and looked around town for an elder. Sir, I've been told you're something of a leader around here. I was wondering if you could help me. Ah, another big one. What might I help you with? The elder Tinsner responded, doing his best not judge them hastily. Well, I heard of the terrible tragedy that occurred here. You have my deepest sympathies. But, I'd heard of the human that came down to help you. 
Penelope Astor is actually a friend of mine. Oh, that, that was her name. She's a very old friend and I was just hoping to find her. I heard she had talked about settling here. Oh, well, yes, she did, but decided against it. She left with the ship she came in on. The Blue Nebula. Ah, seems like I just missed her then. What a beautiful name for a ship though. And a beautiful ship too. Ashen Design. Her captain is a good one as well, Corval by the name of Deeg. Deeg, huh? Oh, you wouldn't happen to know where they were headed, would you? Um, I do believe Deeg spoke of Terran space actually. Ah, well, thank you very much, sir. It's back to the transport for me, but I wish your colony the best. Of course. Any friend of Miss Penelope is a friend of ours. I do hope you find her soon. I'm sure I will.